Hey there everyone, it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today for a new video. So I thought I would use some of the new Tim Holtz Ideology collection because there's a lot of really cool floral themed products in that collection. And I wanted to make a vignette and I had this idea to suspend some vials from the vignette box so I could stick flowers inside. So right now flowers are just starting to bloom in my neck of the woods. So I don't have any fresh flowers for this box, which is what I was really hoping to put in here. But as things warm up and more flowers start to come around, I am gonna be putting a real flower in these vials. So for now, I did put a few fake ones in, but you could do whatever you want. Why don't I jump on into the project and we'll get started. So I have one of the new square vignette boxes and I'm going to go ahead and start first by spraying the box in different sections because I want to create some darker areas of the box and I want some areas to be lighter than others. So I'm taking Distress Spray Stain in Walnut Stain and also Speckled Egg just to add a little bit of a greenish tint, a little bit of a blue green tint to the brown. And I'm just gonna spray some color in some different sections. That'll dry, it'll add some nice warmth and darkness to those areas as you can see here now that it's dried. We're gonna work on next by adding some rub-ons to the outside of the box. So I have these rub-ons, these are super colorful and I have them linked below in the video description. These are from Prima. We're gonna use these to decorate the outside of the box by rubbing these on in different pieces. We're going to create a little bit more of a distressed effect with these. I don't want them perfect across this entire vignette. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the popsicle stick that comes with the rub-ons and I'm starting to rub certain sections of these rub-ons onto the project, but not the entire piece. So we're getting this really nice distressed and worn effect here. I used a variety of the different elements, including some of the borders. I added some flowers and I'm even overlapping pieces to create new looks. So in this case, I'm overlapping some of those borders with more flowers. I'll also use some of the text to overlap in certain areas too. And that's going to create some really nice interest on this box. So once I've covered the box exactly how I want, I'm going to now work on adding a frame. I'm using Simon Says Stamp red line tape in 1 8 inch width and I'm going to carefully run this tape all the way around this box making sure I get all the edges completely covered. I want this to be almost as seamless as possible. So then I'm going to take some glitter, this is, happens to be a silver color, and I'm going to rub that glitter into the exposed adhesive. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a glittery frame on this vignette and that's going to give me some really nice sparkle around the edges. And I thought that would really match nicely with the bright colors and create a fun pop of sparkle. I'll do this to all four sides of the box and I just use my finger to burnish that glitter into the tape. The tape holds the glitter really well so it's not gonna rub off now that it's been burnished in. I'm taking some hardware pieces from Tim Holtz and I have these little screw eyes that I'm gonna twist into the vignette box so that I can use this to wrap some twine around not just the screw eyes, but also the vial. You can see one of the vials I have already attached onto the vignette. So I'm gathering my placement and I'm picking out the exact location where I want the screw eye and I'm carefully starting to screw this into the vignette. The wood for the vignette is very soft so it goes in pretty easily. Then you're just gonna twist it until it gets completely screwed into the box. And this won't go through the back side of the vignette either. Once I have one of the screw eyes in, I'm going to bring my vial back into place and figure out where I want the second one. And I'm trying to keep them fairly level so that way this vial will hang perfectly straight inside of my box. Once I have the second placement figured out, then I screwed that one in and we're ready to add some twine through those screw eyes so that we can hold the vial in place. So I'm gonna take some twine here. This happens to be from May Arts and I'm going to loop it through the screw eyes and then around the vial and then back through the screw eyes again a couple more times. So we're creating a loop that's going to wrap around this a few times and it'll hold this in place very, very well. We'll tie this into a nice bow like we did on the right hand side so that way everything looks super cute and it has a nice shabby chic finish. Perfect for spring and florals. All right, now we're gonna set that aside. I'm gonna do some die cutting. I pulled out some letter dies that I had in my stash. I don't think these are available anymore, but any letter dies will work for this project. You want something that you can use to cut out a nice word. So I was inspired to create the word B, as in like bumblebee, 
beautiful. And the U part is actually Y-O-U. So be you beautiful. And what inspired me to use this particular word was because one of the rub-ons on this box actually said that. And I also have a bumblebee adornment from Tim Holtz that I thought would pair up really well with the B portion of this word. So I'm gonna die cut these letters from some pattern paper that I had in my stash, and I'm just going to arrange them on top of my vignette in the area off to the side of the vials. I also staggered these so that way they had a fun little look, and I think these are really, really cute and a great way to not only add some bright pops of color, but also have a really nice uplifting message. So now that bumblebee, here he is. I have him all ready to go. I wanna color him with some foundry wax. This happens to be silver. Now I'm gonna have a bit of a craft fail here. I apparently had an air bubble in my foundry wax. So I ended up squeezing out a whole bunch more than I actually needed. And I also got it everywhere, but that's okay. I'm gonna clean that up and I'm going to work on coloring my bumblebee. Now I have a lot more foundry wax here than I need and I'll just have to clean this up and throw it away because I can't save it. However, if you are doing this yourself, you really just need a small drop. And I'm using a paintbrush to apply that foundry wax. Then I'll place the bumblebee that's covered in the foundry wax on top of a Simon Says Stamp Positively Everything tool and heat that up. So that way we get that foundry wax completely set and we have that beautiful gilded finish. I'm pulling out some transparency butterflies from Tim Holtz and I'm gonna fold them in half so that they have a bit more lift, they look dimensional. And I'm gonna glue three of them onto my project. I'm also picking out some of these cards that Tim Holtz has in his newest ideology collection. They have lots of different patterns and floral themed elements on them. And I'm going to use a couple of the different blue patterns and also some of the numerics. I'm using collage medium to attach these down onto my project. I'm figuring out exactly where I want them and then placing them in. I also tried to overlap them across the different edges. So like this piece here, I folded it down onto the next side of the box. Once I had it placed, then I brought in more collage medium and covered over the entire piece. That way it sealed it in to lo its location. I'm layering up some of those pieces like this one here, which is a blue piece. I'm gonna layer that up over top of the one I just put down so that you can see both peeking through. I'm gonna do that on all four of the inside edges of the box. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and glue on some of our elements. So I have our little bumblebee here and I'm gonna add some hot glue to the back side of him. We'll place him up on the sentiment to really tie in that B element of the word. Next, I'm gonna glue on the butterflies. I'm using dots of hot glue to drop him into place and I'll also put in a few brooches that I have from Prima. These are really pretty and have a nice sparkle to them so they go really well with the sparkles on our frame. So I think that looks really nice and ties those things together too. Next for the inside bottom portion of our vignette, I'm gonna glue in a variety of colored buttons that I pulled out of my button collection and some of these really pretty fairy droplet glass balls from Tim Holtz. They're super beautiful and I really love the dimension and texture that this provides down along the bottom. And it adds to that shabby chic look that I'm going for here. I feel like this is like a collection of beautiful baubles that are in somebody's jewelry drawer. So that ties in really well with the brooches that I add on the outside edges of our vignette. All right, so like I said, I don't have any real flowers right now, but I pulled out some of these paper flowers that I had in my stash. And so I'm gonna stick these into the vials for now. They look really cute and it's a fun way to be able to display some cute flowers. You could put real ones in here, of course, but I think this is just an adorable project and a really fun way to make something beautiful, springy and colorful for this new season that we're in. So I hope this was a great idea in showing you some of the ways you can use some of these new ideology products. If you're interested in anything that I use today, I have them all linked below in the video description for you to check out. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I will be back soon with more to share with you all. But until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye.